Hello guys, welcome to our channel and lesson two in Genepets and learning the mainframe dashboard. Once we've covered the basics on the desktop version of Genepets, we'll be moving on to NFTs and habitats, which is one of the best parts of the ecosystem. Okay, so let's dive in. Below the dashboard icon is the staking icon. Staking is quite self-explanatory, where you can stake the native token gene in the Genepet staking pool. If you don't have any gene to stake, you can swap your Solana or any other Solana token and receive the gene token itself. It is a steady and simple swap, pretty basic, nice and easy. Below staking is inventory. Now, we would like to cover alchemy quickly, just so we've hit all the bases on what is on your dashboard. Alchemy is where you'll be modifying and crafting all of your NFTs that you've collected in-game. In Alchemy, you can create a range of different cosmetics and ornaments, which, once crafted, will be forever stored in your recipe book, so no need to backpedal on what you have and haven't done. There are a range of different combinations that you can do with Alchemy. You can attempt to mix and match as many materials as you like in different quantities and different amounts, but only a certain combination will allow you to craft a certain NFT. When a successful combination has been discovered, your Alchemy Craft window will light up green. There is a token cost requirement for every single NFT mint that you do. These tokens can be bought or earned in-game. These NFTs have utility in game by changing your Genepex color or by improving its battle stats when battling other opponents. Beta access is a link that you need to receive in order to sign up for the Genepex app. You can get this link through Discord channels or any other social media platform that Genepex has. The leaderboard is self-explanatory Personally, we don't compete with others as we have our own goals and we want to stick to our 10k steps a day. Okay, let's get into inventory. In inventory, if you have purchased land, it will show up here in addition to your genepets. Your refined seeds, crystals, cosmetics, reagents, augments and boosts will also be here. If you are lacking assets or want to purchase any of these assets, there are always links to the marketplace where you can purchase these NFTs. From the alchemy tab we showed you earlier, we crafted as many elements as possible to interact with the ecosystem and get a feel for what can be achieved. These augments will help your genepets in battle, but will also modify its appearance dependent on the items you attach it with. The rarity of the augments are displayed with each SFT2, more on SFTs later. Reagents you will use in Alchemy and they will craft your augments and cosmetics as we covered. The cosmetics will let you change the colour of your Genepet among other attributes. Don't worry about seeds and crystals for now, we will cover that in another lesson. However, you will only be able to acquire these elements with land in your wallet. And talking of wallets, you will need to move your Genepets from your wallet to in-game. It's a really simple process, but doing so will mean you can bank your steps, increase your Genepets level, and interact with the game properly. Finally, habitats are what keep the Geniverse ecosystem running. There are many aspects of being a landowner, where you can rent your land to grafters, see the alchemizing items you are currently crafting, and terraform any new lands that you wish to produce. You will need to grind in game for some time before you can actually terraform or purchase the items from the marketplace to speed up the process. There are a set amount of requirements to terraform new land. However, you'll be able to see this when we start doing our habitat lesson later on. What's really nice about this feature is that you can determine what lands you want to produce. It's totally on your personality types, the visuals that you enjoy, um, there really is no limit to what you can do when trying to terraform new land. And finally, in the last tab is pending items. Whenever you harvest Kai, it will show up in pending items here with a 7, 10 or 14 day mint requirement. So we need to discuss Kai. Kai is the utility token that you will harvest from your Genepet steps via your land. 
The level of your land will determine how much kai you can harvest over a 24 hour period. The amount of land you have on your wallet will also impact the kai harvest. Genesis landowners get a 10 kai bonus too. Every 24 hours, your steps and kai harvest get reset. Your habitat's lifespans, levels, and elements are displayed here. To demonstrate harvesting kai and refining crystals, simply click the Harvest Kai tab, select the amount of days you wish it to take, and sacrifice the energy you have stored from your genepet. Note the amount of energy needed is less if we choose a longer wait time, which is more efficient for us as a whole. The quicker the harvest, the more expensive the energy cost. The transaction will cost you a very small amount of salt. However, you get this back when claiming the Kai after the period of time you've selected. When you're happy with the requirements that you've set, simply harvest your Kai, make sure your wallet is password protected and logged in, and confirm the harvest. Refining crystals also has a cost to it. Each crystal refined costs 10 Kai, but we need these crystals to feed our habitat. The benefit of Genesis land is that you can refine any type of crystal, where terraform lands will only let you refine crystals of that habitat's element type. The amount of crystals you can harvest will depend on your combined land levels. In this case, we have a total level of five, so you can refine five crystals. Another thing you can do, if you want to, is convert your Kai back to energy. This lets you feed your Genepet XP, if that's something you wish to do. It could be a reason of evolving your Genepet or just getting that step efficiency via higher levels. It's quite a simple process, you simply type in the amount of Kai you wish to convert back to energy and confirm the transaction. The amount of Kai that you harvest will determine the amount of energy you receive. There is a reason that we refined our crystals. The crystals need to be put to use as our lifespan decays. To repair a habitat, simply select how much you want to repair it by, feed the crystal element it needs, and confirm that transaction. We do appreciate that you may not want to do all of these steps when purchasing land. So it is possible to hibernate your habitat or pass on the responsibility to a tenant. It's worth checking that they are active however, otherwise neither of you will earn anything. Assigning an alchemist has similar consequences to it as well. A thing to take mental note on is that your lands have durability and a lifespan. These are not the same thing. Your lifespan is set in stone and cannot be repaired. Your durability is what your harvest crystals go towards. Once your durability has run out, you will no longer be able to feed your habitat and it will slowly go dormant. This is all part of the ecosystem as you need to restore your habitat using Kai. Using our lands as an example, here, our level 1 lands are running out of durability with their 90 lifespan. We can't feed them any more crystals and they will slowly go dormant. Upgrading or disconnecting won't necessarily help us here, so we will pick up our time to reactivate our lands. Okay team, that was a lot to take in, but at least you've seen every part of the dashboard now and will be slightly more familiar with the layout and the elements to Genepex. Remember, 
habitat purchases are only needed for the users with leveled up genopets or people keen to interact with the ecosystem. Thanks for watching, see you in the next lesson.